So I am really excited because, as I said before, although if you're newer here or whatever, you don't know this, but I haven't been teaching in six weeks and I am like really excited. I've missed it. I missed you. Oh. Uh, Spencer, thank you, Spencer. That's why you're my special friend. I don't know what that, that could mean too many different weird things. All right. So, I hope you guys last month, if you've been coming, you heard a lot of different testimonies and stuff. I hope you enjoyed those. I hope that they were helpful. Why do you think, you know, people share their testimonies because people go through stuff in their lives? And some testimonies you heard were like, crazy they went through things like hopefully none of you could even even like imagine i hope a couple people or maybe they went through some stuff that really sounds familiar and then you know we had like ann marati who is the pastor's wife and she grew up you know in a christian home and kind of like you know following god to some degree never went like crazy you know off the tracks like the other three did but you know there's different ways for each of us identifying and stuff so um, but so I'm going to start, I was thinking of going one way this week and then I felt like I wanted to go a different way. And it was basically j based on a dream theater song. How many dream theater fans? I'm, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Who knows dream theater? Probably my wife and Tucker. All right. It's just a joke. There is a song called Voices on their second album, Awake. But anyway, um, how many of you were here when we talked about like the appropriate kind of clothing to wear a youth group? All right, um, we gotta have a serious talk because I'm pretty sure nobody said that Yankees hats were appropriate to wear here. So I'm just joking. I'm only kidding. I'm just kidding, Justin. You know I love you, even though. But hey, I'm a Cowboys fan. What can I say? Does anybody here ever hear like voices? Oh, no, not voices. I hear voices. Voices. Like, anybody seen The Sixth Sense? He sees dead people. If you haven't seen that, you should see that. It's like an old movie for you guys. The Sixth Sense? Oh, man. But it's like got a crazy ending and stuff. Anyway, he sees dead people. But there's people that hear voices. It's called schizophrenia. It's an actual, like, thing. But I think all of us hear voices, don't we, to some degree? Like you hear me talking, don't you? Did you just get that hat on or something? You didn't have that on. All of us hear voices, right? People talk to you. Where's places that you hear voices? In public, in your at your home. How about on TV? Youth group, you hear voices. Uh, TV, uh, radio, CDs, MP3s, iPods, iPods P-Pods. Yes, telephone. Podcasts. Podcasts. But we'll go with iPods. I don't cover podcasts. But anything, on the internet, wherever, we hear voices everywhere we go. And, you know, voices have messages. They have something usually that they're trying to tell you, trying to convey to you. Um, you know, there's a lot of voices in our culture and there's different ways where people like they want to tell you something. Like if you watch advertising on TV or on, you listen to advertising on the radio, what's the goal of advertising? Get you to buy, they, get you to buy something. they want you to buy something. So their voice is going to appeal to whatever part of you they're trying to appeal to to get you to buy their product. If you buy this, uh, you know, if you buy Axe deodorant spray, girls will just be falling all over themselves to get to you. And, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is, you know, that's something that's going to appeal to men because that's, you know, the type of thing that men want. Sorry. You know, so they're going to appeal to you and say, girls will like you if you do this. Or, uh, you know, and maybe the same thing for girls with guys. Or if you wear this sneaker, if you buy Air Jordans, you'll be able to dunk and you'll be a good basketball player, you know, whatever. Everybody tries to sell you something. They try to give you a message, right? Or they try to do like, um, you know, they want to convince you. And I like convincing people. That's like a big part of my nature. I like to argue. I like to debate. I like to win people over to my point of view. And I'm pretty good at it. You know, whether it's politics, religion, whether I'm debating atheists, whatever that is, you know, it's fine. So, 
But, so there's voices in our culture though. There's like messages that our culture, like people in our culture, they tell you, like advice that they give in relationships, if you're struggling. Like if you see people on Facebook, you see all kinds of types of people, right? There's people who post their Facebook updates or um, you know pictures on Instagram every five seconds or they tweet, you know, I just, um, you know, I went to the bathroom, the toilet paper was coming over the top, I just took a shower, I just went to the grocery store. Like every five seconds of their life, they need, everybody needs to know. Maybe that's how they get their identity. I don't know. You know, there's people who post on Facebook and they're like, everything they post is negative. And every time you know, you're gonna click and say, hey, how's this person doing? You click on them and you know, you're gonna see on their timeline, everything's gonna be like, really depressing. And there's people that are always like happy and there's all kinds of people and there's all kinds of voices and there's all kinds of messages that we hear. And there's some in our culture, you know, if we don't think about what we're listening to and what the voices are that are speaking into our lives, because, you know, we have voices that we hear and we obey some voices, we disobey some voices. We say, you know, I don't believe that or what they say sounds good. So I'm going to go do what they're telling me. You know, we have all kinds of different voices. Um, you know, one voice says, do what feels good. That's kind of like a thing, isn't it? Isn't that something we should, I mean, it sounds good. Do what feels good. Shouldn't we do things that feel good? Yeah. That sounds good. But what if the thing that feels good is, is bad? I mean, there's lots of things that are not good for us, but they may feel good, but maybe they're hurting somebody else. Or maybe they're hurting ourselves. So I want to talk about two kinds of voices. One is a voice that comes from like our culture that sends us a message that may not be true. And the other voice is God's voice. And I'll just use this example. Do what feels good. Is that something that God has said? No. God actually says in Titus 3.1, he says, do what is good. Do what is good. There's a big difference. And doing what is good may not feel good in the short term. But in the long term, it's going to be a lot better. I mean, people, if you think of people just going by, living by this motto, do what feels good, and they live their lives that way, you know, they don't look too, they don't look too good, you know, down the road because their lives are like totally off the rails and, you know, they're addicted to drugs or they have like all these, you know, STDs that they just can't get rid of and stuff because some are viral and, you know, they just, they're there like, um, HPV that causes cervical cancer in women kills 12,000 women a year and you only get it one way through sexual contact but hey do what feels good hey but you know what it doesn't kill any guys so guys you know don't worry about it you know do what feels good is that is that let me tell you something does that message suck or what I mean are you know people we heard like two testimonies of two of the guys and, and Jessica too but like, you know, two of the guys, Ernie and Ben, were talking about doing drugs and stuff like that. You know, they didn't think when they smoked their first bowl or they smoked their first joint, they didn't think, okay, I'm, getting, I'm starting a life of drugs that's gonna lead me down this path. I'm just gonna do, you know, I'm token up. It feels good right now. It feels good to be high. Hey, guess what? It feels good to be high. It feels good to be drunk. It gives your body a good feeling. But what happens when it ends? What happens when it's over? It's empty. <laughs> It's empty, it's purposeless. You know, you, it's gone, and then you do it again, and then you do it again, and then you do it again, because you want that feeling back, right? And the more you do it, the less of that feeling it gives you, so you gotta do more of it, and then you're like, well, you know what, this isn't even working anymore, and the pain in my life is just so severe, and you, somebody's like, dude, you gotta try this, and they give you like, you know, crack or meth or something like that. You know, all this stuff feels good, but it's not good. So doing what feels good is not a good way to live life. How about do what your heart tells you? Follow your heart. Listen to your heart. That's like an old rock set song. I bet I nobody, unless you're as old as me, knows what that is. You don't know that song. Maybe not the same one, but I know a song with that. Listen to your heart. Yes, exactly. Oh my goodness, all right. Did they redo, someone redo it maybe? Yeah, okay. Well, it was rock set, wasn't it? Okay. Oh, wow. All right. See, I'm hip, man. Kids know the stuff I listened to when I was their age. All right. But do what your heart tells you. I mean, that sounds good, doesn't it? You have an important decision to make. Whatever it is, whatever that decision is, just go and follow your heart. 
What's your heart telling you? Isn't that, doesn't that sound good? It sounds good, doesn't it? No? What did Jessica, she said last week, don't listen to your emotions because your emotions are lies. Yeah, they're lies. Don't listen to your emotions. Don't listen to your heart. Here's what God says about our heart. So that's what the Lord says. Do what your heart tells you. Do what feels good. Do what your heart tells you. Just follow your heart. Trust your feelings, Luke. Use the force. Trust your feelings. Here's what God says about the human heart. The human heart, he says in Jeremiah 17, 9, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? The human heart is deceitful. That means it lies. Our feelings lie because we have an enemy who wants to mess up our lives and he's going to whisper things in our ear. He's going to tell us things and he's not going to say, hey, you know, go smoke weed. You'll feel good, you know, but it's going to. Um, destroy your life because then it's not going to be enough and you're going to do these harder things and you know what you're going to get um, while you're high you're not going to be really thinking about making good choices you're going to have sex with some guy you're going to get knocked up and you're going to be pregnant at 16. Satan does not tell you that it's he lies your human heart lies it doesn't your brain I mean I uh, know I'm going to offend half of you if I say that do it no no I, I wouldn't be offending you I'm moving on. Your brain, you have to use your brain because your brain is sometimes like, you know, you're the rational part of your being. You have to think through, if I do this, what's the consequences? And you may do something that feels good for a moment, but ends up giving you pain for a lifetime. If you remember that Ron Carpenter video we showed, um, I don't know, six, nine months ago. Maybe we'll do it again in a year or something, but it was really good. But he talked about a yoke and how little oxen you know, oxen are these huge, enormous beasts, like very, very, very strong. Or like Mark Anthony told us about like the elephant. I'll use the elephant example because he just did that like a month ago. But he told us about the elephant, which is like one of the largest land animals. I don't know. I think it is the largest, except the brontosaurus. I don't think they exist anymore, though. Just kidding. <laughs> You know, an elephant is a huge animal, right? But they control it by a little, little rope that the elephant can easily break. How do they put a little string on an elephant to lead an elephant along when the elephant can break it? They put it on the elephant when he's a baby, when the elephant can't break it. And as he grows older, he's used to having that rope on him and being directed by that rope. And he knows because when he was little, he couldn't break it. It's like... Um, it's like a balloon. Why? I don't know because you you control where it goes with the strength, uh, and it won't go away unless you take let, it go. Off or let it go. Let it go. <laughs> I'm gonna go there soon. All right, so all right, please, no Disney. I can't stand Disney. I can't stand that dumb "Let It Go" song. So hold on. We'll have a conversation in a second, but we won't need to. Just hang on. Hang on. Chill out. Yeah, I just think it was funny that Ricardo brought that up. And you'll think it's funny in a second, too. But no, I think that's a great example. You know, but those things, they take root in our lives when we're young, when those things are fun. You know, that I could just smoke a little because it's fun and it feels good. But pretty soon, whatever those things are that you did that felt good, you have to do just to feel normal because you don't feel normal when you're not doing those things and they start controlling you, whether it's alcohol. Man, like I just heard a story about somebody I knew that I had no idea struggled with alcohol addiction and just had to go into rehab for alcohol addiction. I know kids with parents who are addicted to crack, who've been addicted to meth, who like sell all of their kids stuff. They buy them something, a new laptop for Christmas and two weeks later, they sell the laptop for drugs for like one eighth of the price that they paid for it to buy it because they're so hooked on that stuff. None of those people started that thinking that they were gonna be addicted to, the dr to drugs. Like my biggest addiction was chewing tobacco. I shared this before, but you could equate it with cigarettes. It's, cigarettes are much more sexy. Chewing tobacco is disgusting. You know, you put this big wad in your lips and you like spit. Shelby knows she had to live with that. I had big cups filled with dip spit all over the house. I didn't have a spit tune like that. It's disgusting. But here's what I thought growing up. I thought people who smoke cigarettes, people who get addicted are weak. They don't know what they're doing. They're just, you know, they, can, they should be able to stop. Why don't they just stop? I mean, they're so weak. And so, you know, I started doing dip and at first it gives me a, gave me a nice buzz. Like my head, my, I don't know, you know, if you've ever had a buzz from drinking or smoking or anything like that, you know what I'm talking about. It gave me like a buzz. 
And then after a while, there was no buzz. It was, the buzz was like the first couple months. After a while, there was no buzz. I just did it because I was addicted. I was a slave to that stuff for like 14 years until, well, August 9th will be five years I've been off of it. You know, it's but we don't look at those things when we first do them as something that's going to enslave us, enslave us. But that's what it does. Just do what feels good. You know, forget it. Don't worry about the consequences. You know, there's this movie I saw. Speaking of messages and voices, but that's those are voices. Those are things we hear in our culture. Just follow your heart. Like I see when someone's struggling on Facebook and they put something, I see the dumbest advice that people give to people. But you know, you got to ask yourself. It seems like people want dumb advice. It seems like they put something on Facebook. I'm just using Facebook as an example because it's a really darn good one. But people put something on Facebook and they're like, what should I do? And they don't want somebody to say, or they're like, man, I really I did this. Maybe I shouldn't have, I don't know. And people are like, no, man, go for it. And I want to say, that's stupid. It's stupid. You're like messing up your life because I see things through a lens of the stuff that I've been through and the things that God says in his word. So um, one, you know, way we hear messages is through movies. And there was this movie I saw, I don't know, maybe four months ago, three months ago. Well, here, I'm going to show you a clip from the movie. And I want you to just think about what the message this, this tells. Because there is a message in the song. Think about it. We're going to talk about it. Go. If you think about the message of that song, there could be a lot of messages, but let me just give you a little background on like what happens up to that point really quick. That girl's Elsa. Elsa is, and if I get it wrong, I've only seen it once. She's a princess. She's a queen. She becomes the queen. That's right. Um, she's only a witch if she weighs the same as a duck, because that means she's made of wood, and then you burn her. That's where Monty put that in the Holy Grail. Okay. Probably nobody saw that. Maybe it might. It's uh, the height of the logic, that scene, but it's a very funny movie. All right. So Elsa's a queen, and she has a royal kingdom, right? But she has this little problem. She freezes things, and she almost kills her sister. She froze her and scared everybody, and she had to hide her powers. What? What? Oh. Uh, it's just a flash wound. I'm getting better. All right, let's leave that alone. So she freezes things. All right, so if I'm a little off and not perfect, you know, that's fine. So anyway, she eventually takes off. Like, you know, ultimately, I think she's taking off for the good of everybody. She leaves her kingdom, where she's a queen, and she decides... This song is about she doesn't want to hold her power back anymore. She doesn't want to hide who she is. She says these words like at the beginning of the song. You know, no longer she doesn't want to conceal um, the real like her, who she really is. Huh? Conceal, don't feel like before she couldn't really let her real feelings out. She had to hide those feelings. She had to suppress them. Um, but, you know, she wants, she didn't want to hold back anymore. She wants to be who she wants to be without worrying about the consequences anymore. You know, so what, what do you think, what's that telling you, the song, Let It Go? What's a message? Let your feelings out, man. Let your feelings out, man. Okay. There's, there could be different interpretations. Corey? Shh. Uh, Tucker, go for the guts. What do you mean? Uh huh. Just do it. Ooh, that's like Nike. Do they still have that? Just do it, Nike. Just do it. Go big or go home. Obey your thirst. That's like the same thing, right? Sprite, obey your thirst. She had this thirst to let it go, and she obeyed it. I mean, that's good, right? You know, we shouldn't hold back our feelings. We should just be who we are, right? 
So what were the results of her letting it go? She made a castle. That was pretty. That was a good part, but there was some she negative consequences. Life. She created life. Prince Hans came after her. Well, Prince Hans, the noble guy who finished Anna's sandwiches. <laughs> that was funny. I like that song. All right, Corey, what? She hurts her sister. She hurts her sister. She, like, froze the whole kingdom, right? And she ends up almost killing her sister. By following her own desires, by following her heart, by letting it go. So there's this message in the song that sounds good. Just be who you are. Just let it go. Don't conceal. Don't feel. Hide, like, don't, I mean, don't. Yeah, the, I, I need to do a double negative. You know, you got to just let it out. That's what she's saying. It's good. Just follow your heart. It's like all these things. We do what feels good. Don't hold it back just for other people. Is that like the message? Because, you know, we have a similar battle. You know, if we're Christians, God calls us his own children. We're basically royalty. God is the king of the universe, the king of kings and lord of lords. And he's called us to be his children. That makes us princes and princesses. And yet we leave our royalty that God has given us. We like kind of leave it behind and we go and follow like the world and wallow in the gutter, you know, where God never made us to be and God doesn't want us to be, but we're just following our feelings, you know, right off the edge of a cliff. And we don't worry about the consequences. Well, if she thought like originally she was thinking, I don't want to hurt people. And she's thinking, you know, I'm just going to go off into nowhere. You know, where it's not going to hurt anybody, but she like froze her whole old kingdom. She didn't know. Um, Eminem had a similar one, and I used this phrase before, but I can't say the first word, but I'll just say F it before I kick the bucket. From his song Berserk, if you've ever, you guys haven't listened, you don't yeah. listen to Eminem. But if you did, he has a song Berserk, and it's like F it before I kick the bucket. Well, it rhymes with bucket. But. Anyway, but that's kind of telling you the same message. Because there's a lot of things, like almost all messages in our culture tell you one thing, that it's all about you, that the world revolves around, around you, you have to do what feels good for you, you know, you can't worry about the other person, and people go into life thinking this. They go into the workplace where they think they're first, they go into families where they get married to a husband thinking that life is all about them and that they're the center of the marriage, they have kids and their kids get like pushed on and maybe you guys are some of them because they think life is about them and a career and having more stuff for them and kids are sort of an inconvenience that get in the way and they push you aside and they give you a game system and say here go play and get out of my way so i can you know get on with my life and stuff or you know i don't know i mean i'm just that's what people think though they think the world revolves around them and if you watch any ad on tv almost every single one in some way is geared toward you getting your needs met. Like aggressive. Aggressive. <laughs> I don't know, probably. But they all have the same message as let it go, or, you know, and I'm not saying Disney, or I'm not saying Frozen, or I'm not saying let it go is some big evil song of, you know, where Satan masterminded and, you know, wrote the, the lyrics to the song. I think it's a nice song. But I'm just, I think we have to think, we have to think about the messages of things that we listen to. Just think about them, filter them, process them. Because every message is either one thing or the other. I mean, there's things like, okay, Coke is the best soft drink. I mean, that's an opinion, right? Sorry. Um, the Cowboys are the best, well, that's a fact. Um, oh, wait, wait, in 1998, <laughs> 95, 92, 93, 95, in that era. Anyway, number 93, 94, 96. They were pretty good in 98, but they were on the downward swing. Anyway, I know, I can't live in the past, but this is their year. So, listen, all of us, we have like two natures, in a way. We have a bad nature inside, and we have this battle where if I just do whatever I feel, well, maybe what I feel is to punch you in the face. Yes. Now, should I do what I feel? Yes, yes it will make everything better, I swear. <laughs> but you know that stuff. When I'm driving my car, and like I'm driving back from um, this really cool uh, lake party in Wolcott the other day, 
and there's this guy in a white Jeep, and I'm going like 45 and a 40. I'm not going slow. I'm not going crazy fast either. But he's like, comes right up in my rear bumper, and I see him in my rear view mirror. He must have missed me by like that much. Veers around me and cuts in where he almost hits me on the way, and I had to hit my brakes. And my instinct was to go after him. But I got my family in the car, and I love Jesus. <laughs> and the old Chris may have gone after him and may have gotten great pleasure. Or the guy, you know, I'm driving a bunch of you guys here today, and I'm pull over, and you're, like, telling me some guy, like, gives us the finger. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, and then he follows me off the exit. I'm like, hmm, I think we should pull, stop. <laughs> and then, like, eight of us get out of the car. <laughs> but no, but no. But hey, let it go. Just do it. Follow your feelings. All right. You know, we should not follow our feelings if our feelings lead us to do things that are wrong. And this message of the world, the, the main voice of the world, wherever the voice is coming from, the message is about the same. You have to do what feels good for you. You have to do what works for you. When you're in a marriage where you made a commitment to love this person for the rest of your life, for better, for worse, for sicker, for poor, richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, when you've done all these things and you're giving up everything and they're first, well, guess what happens when it's that feeling when they've lost that loving feeling? When they've lost that loving feeling and that feeling's gone and maybe they do stuff that irritates you or whatever, guess what? You're living with the person. They're going to irritate you. They're going to put their toilet paper roll going the wrong way. When they're supposed to eat their corn going around like this, they're going to go back and forth like a typewriter. It's going to bother you. I'm just kidding. We just had a couple over the other night. We were talking about marriage and stuff because they're going to get married soon. Steph and Jordan, some of you know them. They're really cute. I'm excited. It's awesome. So, but so when you put yourself first, that doesn't end up working out better for you. In marriage, we have to put other people first. That's not, that's not the message the Bible says. The message the Bible says is very opposite what the world says. When the world says, think all about yourself, it's all about you, everybody else exists to make you happy, guess what happens when people fall short? Guess what happens when people don't make you happy? If you're depending on everyone else for your happiness at that point. And that's when I start seeing Facebook posts about people who are depressed and people who want to end their lives. And, you know, I mean, therapy is good. And, you know, I've known a lot of people that have gotten a lot of help through therapists, but there's no therapist unless they're a Christian and they get their advice from the Bible. Therapy is sort of like if you have this big, deep infection in your arm and it's festering and smelly. And, you know, you come up to me and I'm like, I got this big infection in my arm. And, um, you know, it's gray and rotting. And there's maggots in it. And, all right, that's good. And you got this big infection. I'm like, oh, here, have a band-aid. You know, that's what a lot of that secular stuff is going to give you. They're going to treat the symptoms because they're coming all at it from the angle of like you're not getting your needs met there's something in your life your parents hit you your parents abused you your parents neglected you your father ran away all of this stuff could be true but that is not the core root of your problems our problem is that we believe that we are the most important people here on earth and when we're all focused on ourselves it's going to lead to depression it's going to lead to that stuff and so the solution and i'm not saying it's like a magic wand or anything but if our focus on ourself is leading us down this road, if all I thought about was myself, man, I'd be depressed too. The solution, well, the Bible says, if you read all through the Bible and you think of this message of the world, get your needs met first, it's all about you. You know, you can't love other people until you really love yourself. The Bible doesn't say anything like that. The Bible nowhere tells you to love yourself. The Bible tells you to love two things. The, God takes the entire Ten Commandments Jesus does, who is God anyway. And he sums them up in two commands. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor, neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. In fact, Paul writes in Philippians uh, 2, 3, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Think of, of others as better than yourselves. When we put others first, when we look, if I'm focused on my life and I'm comparing myself to everyone else, I'm like, man, uh, my newest game system, okay, because I'm a guy, my newest game system's a PS2. I mean, man, and I see people that have, and I see my newest car, I have a 2003 Grand Caravan, a 1999 
uh, Toyota Camry. You know, I mean, I could like go get a loan and I could get a newer car and I could be in bondage and debt. I don't want to do that. Better than nothing. But I have two cars that run. Thank you. It's better than nothing. I'm looking at it all from the wrong perspective because I'm focused on myself. If I start thinking of other people, if I start thinking of that for so many people that have so much less than I do, I start realizing how amazingly blessed I am. When I start helping, when I start giving things away to other people, when I live out like we did that hashtag I give thing outside and that's the campaign our church has been doing, I give. When I start giving, that's when I really start discovering true life. When I give the stuff away that I have, and I have a lot that I am so thankful for. Do I have as much as a lot of other people? No, guess what? I don't need it, I don't want it. I don't want the lives that they have. I want the life that God has given me. God's blessed me in so many ways. And maybe God's blessed you in so many ways, but as long as you're focused on yourself and woe is me, and I'm not getting this and I'm not getting that and I don't have what he has, then you're never going to truly be happy. When you start looking at other people, go to another country, you know, go on a missions trip, go somewhere where you see that there's so many people that have so much less than we do and go help people, give up your time, maybe give up some money, maybe give up some stuff and just bless somebody else. That's the way that you're truly gonna be blessed. That's what God says. That's the plan that God has for our lives to give what we have away. He's given us, and you know what? If I, if you, if we were better at giving things away, I think God would give us more. It's like he, Jesus tells the parable of the talents where he gives, um, I don't remember exactly, but he gives one guy one talent, one guy two talents, another guy five talents, something like that. When I say talent, sorry, let's say gold pieces. He gives our five bucks, one buck, two buck, and five bucks. You know, then he comes back a little while later and he's like, what did you do with the money I gave you? Well, the guy with five bucks is like, well, I invested it and I doubled it. Here's 10 bucks. The guy that had two bucks, he's like, well, I invested it and I doubled it. Here's four bucks. And the guy with one buck says, well, I knew you were a hard man and I wasn't sure and I was nervous about losing the money you gave me, so I buried it. And Jesus said, away with you, you evildoer or something like that. And he threw him out into the outer darkness where there was much weeping and gnashing of teeth. So when God gives you a little and you do something with that little bit, and you give it away and he sees you being wise with it, then God will give you more. Because So the guy that gave back 10 talents, God gave him more because he managed what God had already given him well. We have to manage. God has given us stuff. He's given us gifts. He's given us talents. I mean, actual talents, not talents in the Old Testament, whatever sense. Like real gifts, we're good at things. You know, when we use those things to help others and to fulfill the purpose that God gave them to us for in the first place, then we're really going to do that. Um, back to like Frozen, Elsa learns a lesson. Uh, well, she, you know, she's like, you know, she kind of follows this message. Be true to yourself, follow your heart, regardless of who it may hurt. She didn't think about that. But she learns by the end that turning away and slamming the door, like the words from the song, turn away and slam the door, she learns that by doing that, it didn't lead to true fulfillment, but using her powers for the good of others is what really turned her life around. When she just went crazy, I mean, how long do you think that joy would last, creating Olaf, creating a big castle? She was alone. She was alone. That wouldn't last very long. We think there's things that will lead to our fulfillment. Those voices say try them. Other people say try them because they're stuck on them. They want you down here with them because they'll feel a lot better with company. Misery loves company. Oh. But so think about these things like sex, like drugs, like smoking, maybe shopping. I want to hit everything. <laughs> Pornography. All of these things may seem like good things. They seem like they're good. They have a good payoff. I'm not hurting anybody except, you know, like just use pornography as an example. The women that are like abused by the porn industry. You know, you are hurting people. So here's the thing. We don't need to celebrate our evil instincts. And that's what a lot of these voices say. Just go with what you feel. If you want to do it, if it feels good, go ahead and do it. You know, as long as you're not hurting anybody else. I mean, what can we really do that hurts ourselves that doesn't hurt anyone else? It's really hard to imagine anything in that category because there's people that love us and care about us. What? Okay, what? 
cutting yourself. Well, let me ask you a question, Tucker. Hold on. Well, if you cut yourself and that's all you do and no one ever knows, maybe, except then it probably affects like how you feel when you do it or it's sort of like an addiction in its own from people I've talked to that have done it. And so, you know, eventually it changes your behavior. But really, almost everything you can think of that you do that is, that is negative, that's evil, you're affecting other people. Everything we do because we're all connected. I care about all of you. I don't want you to hurt yourselves. That's the whole purpose I'm here. Um, all right, so here's a voice. When we think of voices and messages, I have one for you. You will never find fulfillment by looking within yourself or trusting your feelings or following your heart. You'll never find fulfillment that way. You will only find true fulfillment when you lay yourself aside and put God and others first. Why? Because even if you help yourself or you achieve your dreams, I mean, think of all the people that have gotten up to here. Like, um, I don't know if I used this example, Tom Brady before. Tom Brady won how many Super Bowls? Three, I think. Three Super Bowls, Super Bowl MVP, Pro Bowl MVP, I mean, he has it all. If you're a young person, you're like, I wanna play football, and you imagine being the best there is. I mean, Tom Brady has accomplished everything. And you know what he says? He's like, there's gotta be more. There's gotta be more. You could have everything, you know, and you could look at Lindsay Lohan or Britney Spears or, you know, all these people that get to the top of whatever their profession is, and they think, you know, I've arrived, I've gotten everything that I've ever wanted out of life. I'm rich. If I had money, rich people, whatever it is, and they get there and they realize this is it. All I've ever wanted I have and this is it. None of that is truly fulfilling because they'll always want something more. None of that satisfies us. It just leaves us more and more empty. But these voices make you feel good sometimes, so you listen to them. Like, you know, food. If I eat more food, I mean... You know, I was losing a lot of weight. I lost like 30 pounds. I kept it off, but I haven't lost any in the last two months. I gotta like get back on it. You know, but food is one of those things. Like I think, I, I know it's not true, but I think, you know, I'll be happier, I'll feel satisfied if I eat more. It's not true. It just makes me angry after I do it. I'm like, why did I do that? It was stupid. So I should have nuts and asparagus. <laughs> But they make you feel good for the moment. They make you feel good. They stroke your ego. They seem so right. And all, everyone else is doing that stuff. Everyone else is doing it, so it must be okay. You know, all these other people, and some of them seem happy. Anybody ever seen Basketball Diaries? What? That's a rough movie, isn't it? Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Mark Wahlberg. That's a good one. To, if you ever want to ne not do drugs, watch Basketball Diaries. It's really rough, though, I'm just saying. But it is a good movie, and it's... It's sad, isn't it? I mean, yeah, anyway. So they, every, all these things seem right, and they're everywhere. All these messages, all these voices. You can't go anywhere without hearing that message that reinforces that idea that life is all about you. And if you get your needs met and you follow your feelings, then you'll truly be happy. But there's only one truth, and that truth, well, I actually don't have a, a version of it, but that truth is right here. Oh, and the answer in the U version Bible app. It's in the Bible. It's a, well, if you go, all your phones can have the Bible, but that's ultimately where the truth is. If you want to know what's the lie, I mean, because there's so many voices, how do you know which one to listen to? How do you know which one to choose? How do you know which ones to ignore, especially when the wrong voices are everywhere, when everyone's doing these things, these messages are everywhere? How do you know what the right voice is? Every voice, it's very simple for me, and I've learned this over 39 years of life. Every voice that agrees with the Bible is true, and it's a voice you should listen to, even if you don't want to hear it. And every voice, is, you know what, and I, I won't even say even if you don't want to hear it, I will say especially if you don't want to hear it. The Bible says, and this is one of the wisest quotes I've ever heard, Proverbs 27, 6. It says, wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Think about this, wounds from a friend. That means somebody who really cares about you will say something hard, even if it hurts your feelings temporarily, but it's something that needs to be said. They're telling you the truth, but they're wounding you by doing it. 
It's better to have those wounds than people that are your enemies, really. They may act like your friends, but they're kissing you. They're just telling you nice things that sound good to you, but they're things that are really just going to mess up your life. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. You have to choose the right voices to listen to. Messages that are designed to ensnare you and rob you of joy, hope, and purpose are everywhere, and they all sound really, really good. And I use this example, but I like examples where you can visualize, smell, I don't know about hearing, taste, <laughs> okay, maybe not. But, I mean, if you just imagine a big steaming pile of crap just right in the middle of the floor here. <laughs> But you put over it, you cover it with ready whip whipped cream, and you put a cherry on top, it might cover that small and it might look really, really good. You know, but that's what the voice is, that's what the message of the world is. It tells you something that looks good on the outside, but underneath is still a big, heaping, steaming, smelly pile of crap. It's what it is with flies and maggots. You gotta have maggots. Yeah, but that's what it is. It all looks good. It all smells good. It all sounds good, but it's not good. It's going to kill you. It's poison. Um, all right. And if you ask me for advice, please only ask me if you really want to know the truth, because I'm going to tell you the truth because I love you and I care about you. And the truth will never, ever, 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 ever hurt you. It may hurt to hear it. It may mess up your feelings or whatever, but you need to hear the truth. God, Jesus says the truth will set you free. So God's voice. Here's what God says. Because all these messages in the world, they want you to feel like, you know, you need, like women, you have to have a boyfriend to be have meaning, to be a real woman. You have to give it up. Guys, if you don't have a girlfriend, then maybe you might, there must be something wrong with you. Maybe nobody likes you. You know, or you need your approval from a guy, from a girl, from your friends, from your parents. You need all of these things. That's what the world says, and that's why you know people feel like they you know have to not even be themselves anymore to get this approval. But the Bible says in Romans chapter eight verse one, it says there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. If you know God, if you're in Christ Jesus, you may have messed up in your life, you may have done bad things, you may have done stupid things. But God doesn't condemn you for those things if you're in Christ Jesus because Jesus died on the cross to forgive you of those sins. Those sins are gone. There's no sin that's too big for God to forgive. He says nothing will separate you from his love. You're a child of the most high God. And here's Satan would love nothing more than to take one of God's very own children and to make them think that they're something totally different. They're just like a worthless piece of trash so that they're not effective. They're not living out the calling that God has for their lives. They Satan would love nothing more than you to be God's child and you to be like Elsa, to leave your royal inheritance or the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. Leave all of that and just follow your wicked heart. Listen to your wicked heart and destroy your life. Listen to God's voice because only God loves you enough to send your son to die for his sins. A while ago, um, some of you, if you know this song, maybe you're already thinking of it. But when you think of voices that you're listening to in your life, it makes me think of this song, The Voice of Truth. So we're going to show like a little video about it. Check it out. The words are really good and the message is really good. Think about the voices that are speaking to you, speaking into your life. Think about whether, because what matters is not how the voice makes you feel, but whether the voice is telling you what's true or not. And ultimately, the truth only comes from one place, God's word. And I just heard, um, I'm just going to share this, but like, can I just tell them? Okay. Can I tell them? Okay. Um, a friend of Brian's, he got a message about five minutes ago that she took her own life. And I just, 
I can't imagine like a feeling of hopelessness and despair that great where you feel like there's no other way than to do that. And I think, I don't know, in a weird way, I think like it applies. I want to pray for her and her family in a minute, but I just feel like it applies because there's like a lot of, a lot, so many messages that make us feel like our lives are worthless, like that it will never get better, that nothing will ever change. And I think a person who takes their own life, because I have some experience with people with depression, they feel like there's just no hope, that it's always going to be black, that it's always going to be dark, that it's never going to change, and that it's just always going to be like this. That's a lie. None of those messages are true. Don't believe them. There's people here who care about you. I mean, I know, I've seen so many messages from some people that have come to youth group, and maybe you guys have seen them too, and I'm not going to name names, but you see messages on Facebook where you're wondering, you know, is this person going to take their own life? And, you know, I try to reach out to those people, but a lot of times they're just unwilling to hear that I don't know what the, I don't know how to reach them. They don't, they just want to hear, I guess, what they want to hear, but they don't want to hear the truth. And I've had so much experience with this stuff, unfortunately, that, you know, I can't tell them anything else. I can only tell them what, what I know. I mean, I can only tell them what the Bible says and what I know to be true. And if somebody says, you know, that God doesn't love me, I just know that's not true. It's not true. God loves every single person. Alexis, every single person, no matter how distant they feel, no matter how bad you feel, no matter how down you feel, as horrible as life seems to be, as far from God as you may seem to be, as far from light, as far from, you know, happiness and joy where it doesn't even seem like you can remember that feeling what it even feels like to be happy god loves you through that stuff and you have to just keep holding on you have to just keep trusting him don't give up if you're ever tempted like you're really thinking about something first of all if you're not don't just put everybody else through hell by posting stuff on facebook um, just to get responses but if you really are struggling, don't post it on Facebook. Call me. If you know, if you're a guy, call me. Um, call Mike. Call Al. Call like whoever you connect with. If you're a woman, call Shelby. Call Marge. Call Dawn. Call Kim. Call Beth. I mean, we're people who love you and care about you, and we're going to give you the right kind of advice and pray for you and help you, and you know, we'll be through there with you through the entire thing. We. Love you and care about you. And we're going to tell you the truth. That's all I can say. Let's pray. God, we thank you, God, that with all the voices in the world, God, that you have the voice of truth, God. That you tell us what's right, God. That you've given us your word, the Bible, God. That we can read. We can know what's right. We can know what's true. We can know. You say in your word in Jeremiah 29, 11, that you know the plans you have for, you, for us plans for good and not for disaster to give us a hope and a future God but we see so many people falling and so many people struggling God and God we need to lean on you and your truth and trust in you even through the hard times God because when you bring us through those hard times and we trust you through them God you bring us into something so much better on the other side Lord and God I pray if there's people here that are struggling people here that are depressed that whatever they're going through God that instead of turning to anything else that the world says will meet their needs or solve their problems, God, that they will trust in you, that they will turn to you, God, as the only one, as the only source of happiness, as the only source of joy, as the only source of hope and meaning in their lives, God. Thank you that you give us a higher purpose than to just be born as a collection of cells going through life and dying and becoming worm food, God, that we have such a higher purpose, Lord. And God, I pray for this young girl's family, Lord. I can't imagine how they must be hurting right now. I pray for Brian. I pray for her friends and people that know her, Lord, that you be their strength, God. Let them rest on you, God. Let this horrible tragedy, Lord, end in drawing people closer to you and trusting you, God, more. God, please, if there's anybody struggling with this here today, Anybody that we know that we're connected to, God, I pray that you just help them shine a light into their lives, God. 
Let them trust in you through it, Lord. Um, let them trust in us and the leaders, God, through this, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's kind of a depressing end of note, but it is what it is. That's life, and it sucks sometimes. But God is real, and he's there, and he loves you, and he loves Alexis and her family and her friends. I know it, and that's the truth. God bless you.